Potion brewing is a really important part of Minecraft, but a lot of players know very little about it. So in this video, I'll explain everything about potions, tipped arrows, cauldrons, brewing, and more. The Nether and the Nether Fortress is the part of Minecraft that contains basically all the different potion brewing ingredients. And then to make almost every single potion, you need nether wort, which is found mainly in the Nether Fortress. Although you can also find nether wort inside of Bastion Remnants very, very rarely. Still, it is mostly inside of the Nether Fortress. Fortress. As well as that, of course, we need blaze rods. And blazes are also found only inside the nether fortress, from the blaze spawner, as well as inside of other parts of the fortress. For instance, the source of magma cream is the magma cube. And magma cubes are found most commonly inside of the basalt delta. And of course, the basalt delta is only inside of the nether. There's lots of different ways of farming potion ingredients. So for instance, you could have a magma cube farm. You can also trade with cleric villagers, as they will sell you all kinds of brewing related items. Items. But as well as that, there is the witch farm. Now, witches are definitely a very potion related mob inside of Minecraft, and witch farms are no different, giving you access to things like gunpowder, glowstone dust, redstone dust, spider eyes, and all kinds of other useful brewing ingredients like bottles. So, let's exit from the nether and go into the overworld. And of course, right here we have our potion brewing laboratory. Once you get yourself your blaze rods, you want to craft a brewing stand made with one blaze rod and three cobblestone. Now, of course, with this blaze rod it's not just gonna throw out potions at us so to actually make the potions from the brewing stand you want to get glass bottles and right click on water with them to make yourself some water bottles the brewing stand can hold up to three water bottles but it doesn't have to be filled however you 100 always want to fill up a brewing stand it's never a good idea to brew with only one you always want to brew with all three the other thing that absolutely all brewing needs is blaze powder blaze rods craft from one rod into two powder and one powder will power a brewing stand for a while. This is basically like the fuel of the brewing stand, and it does consume it, so let's say if we were to break this later, it's not going to drop this blaze powder, the blaze powder is going to kind of sit there until it's used up. But unlike let's say smelting fuel, there's no timer for it, it's just about how many uses you have that powder for. The other thing that almost all brewing needs is nether warts. Now the nether wart is grown on top of soul sand like this, and you can get more of them if you break it with fortune when being harvested. But either way, basically every potion, you want to start it with a nether wort. That's going to go down there. It's going to take a little while for this to brew into the bottles. This converts that from water bottles into awkward potions. Now, awkward potions are kind of awkward in the fact that they give you literally no effects. So there's no point of doing anything with them. What you want to do once you've made that awkward potion, though, is put in your secondary ingredient. We're going to start by brewing the five positive effect potions. We start off with the potion of swiftness. Now, this swiftness potion is made when you brew one piece of sugar into these potions that are awkward. If you try putting one of these secondary ingredients into just a water bottle, it won't work. So basically, this piece of sugar will go directly into these, and it gives us speed 20% for three minutes. Then, of course, we have here the potion of leaping. This is made with, well you guessed it, a rabbit's foot. Of course a rabbit's foot makes sense for a leaping potion. There's also the strength potion. That's made by adding a piece of blaze powder not to this side of the brewing stand, but on top here. And that gives us three minutes of strength, which is a plus three attack damage on all of our attacks. Instant health is quite a good one, and this is made with a glistering melon slice. Those are crafted with gold nuggets, as well as pumpkins. And finally we have the potion of regeneration, which is a ghast tier being brewed directly into potions. But you notice it's only 45 seconds seconds as it is quite powerful. Now there's ways of modifying all these effects and we'll go into that in just a minute here, but let's go on to the next group of five different potions and those are the negative effect potions. So the first one of these is a slowness potion. Slowness is made by first creating a speed potion with sugar. Then to that swiftness potion you want to add a negative modifier which is going to be a fermented spider eye and that will convert this potion of swiftness into the opposite of being swift which is a potion of slowness which is there for a minute and a half and it's minus 15% speed. To make this potion, you actually do not want to brew this with nether wart first to make an awkward potion. Actually, you want to just put directly into water bottles a fermented spider eye. If you're wondering how to make a fermented spider eye, it is a standard spider eye, a piece of sugar, and a brown mushroom in the crafting table. 
that gives one fermented spider eye. Anyway, directly putting it into here, that gives us a potion of weakness, which makes it so that you cannot attack very well, and also with zombie villagers, it makes it so you can cure them. The next potion is made by brewing into an awkward potion, a spider eye, and so that's how you get that potion of poison. Next we have potion of harming. Now potion of harming is made two different ways. The first way is by taking the potions of poison and by actually reversing the potions of poison with a fermented spider eye. The other way is to start by making a healing potion. But you can see right here of course that turn these into potions of instant damage. And over here with our healing potion we can add a fermented spider eye to this one as well and that will turn those into potions of instant damage also or a potion of harming. For the last negative effect potion it's actually a mixed effect really. You want to take an awkward potion and put in it a turtle shell. And I'll tell you why it's somewhat of a mixed effect. The turtle shell brews into a potion that gives you not one but actually two effects. It's called a potion of the turtle master and we get slowness 4 as well as resistance 3. Now slowness is obviously a negative effect but resistance means you'll get less damage from mobs. So that's why I have it in the negative effect area is because of that slowness but really it's not positive or negative it just depends on what you're using it for. And finally we have five potions with other effects not strictly positive or negative in terms of health or statistics. So the first one is made with a magma cream. Magma cream by the way if you're having trouble getting it is crafted with a blaze powder and a slime ball if you do not want to fight magma cubes and this gives us a potion of fire resistance which of course would obviously make it so that we're not burnt if we're in fire or lava it also increases our view distance in lava by a little bit. Next we have something brewed with a phantom membrane and a phantom membrane gives us a potion of slow falling. You'll note it's only a minute and a half on here a little bit less than normal but basically that means that when you jump when you fall down you fall down slower which will protect you from fall damage. The next thing is a potion of water breathing. Now this is brewed with a puffer fish and this will give you directly from awkward potion and puffer fish and then a potion of water breathing. At three minutes it's actually pretty good. And next we have a potion of night vision which is made with a golden carrot. And of course night vision basically gives you like a full bright effect with no shaders so everything is fully bright. And the last one of these potions is actually not started with awkward potions. It's converted from a potion of night vision with a fermented spider eye to give it the sort of negative twist on it although it's not really negative. I guess the idea would be that the opposite of something that affects your vision is something that affects other people's vision. So invisibility, a potion that turns you completely invisible. And of course this is an incredibly fun potion inside of Minecraft, great for pranks and other things. So there's ways of modifying all these and I'll talk about that in a second, but a big question would be what if you get an effect that you do not want to have? Well if you have the poison effect and only the poison effect, honey is an antidote to the poison effect taking only that away. So for instance we now still have slow fall but to get rid of absolutely every single effect that you have on, you want to drink a milk bucket. You see a milk bucket will clear all status effects, you can see here they're now gone. And so having a large supply of milk buckets around can be a great idea with things like let's say mining fatigue. Just be aware of course if you're let's say in lava with fire resistance and you happen to drink a milk bucket in the middle of there, you could definitely die. But either way, both milk and honey are good options for getting rid of different status effects. That's where the modifying ingredients come in, gunpowder, glowstone dust, redstone dust and dragon's breath. And these all do different things and I'll work through them one by one. The first one we'll talk about is redstone dust. Redstone dust is an extender so it takes however long the effect duration of the potion currently is and it makes it longer. But of course you can only do this once so for instance you couldn't just continually add redstone dust to a potion to get one that's hundreds and hundreds of minutes. Generally a potion goes from three minutes to eight minutes but sometimes the length is doubled or added a little bit more on to like let's say a minute and a half potion of slow falling is not extended to eight minutes because it started at three minutes because that's the same proportion as it would be for an eight minute potion. And so when you're brewing you almost always want to be adding in redstone because it over doubles the effect duration of your potion at almost no extra cost since redstone dust is practically free. Now certain things like water breathing cannot be made any better. However if something can be strengthened that's where glowstone dust comes in. It's a potion modifier of strength and actually none of these effects right here can be extended with that. However an example of something that could is let's say instant damage. 
we can take this from an instant damage 1 potion, to then with the glowstone dust, we can have an instant damage 2 potion, which is much stronger. So for instance with this potion of harming, we lose a huge amount of health with that, compared to let's say with potion of harming 1, it's just not as much because it's not as strengthened. And of course something like this for instance couldn't have its length be modified as it's just an instant effect potion, but some things can have their potency or the amount of time they last be increased. So for instance potion of the turtle master, we could make that last longer longer if we want, going from 20 seconds slowness for resistance 4 to then 40 seconds slowness for resistance 4, but we could have also taken these and made the effect be stronger with glowstone dust, but the redstone dust and glowstone dust are mutually exclusive so we have to stop there with that. What about the other two modifiers, gunpowder and the dragon's breath? These change how you actually use the potion. So for instance with the invisibility here, and actually you can have mixed potion types in the cauldron if it makes sense. So for instance right here, we can modify all of these with the gunpowder at once. It's kind of fun actually brewing with multiple potion types at once. And what does gunpowder do? Well it turns this from something where you have to stop, hold down right click and drink to consume the potion, to something much more instant and also being able to be applied to other mobs. As for instance, you couldn't let's say make a villager drink a potion, these are now splash potions. Now splash potions have a slightly different look, and basically the idea would be is we can use them on other mobs or on ourselves. So for instance here we could throw this and get the slow falling if it hits us, which it did. Or funny enough we could use the potion of invisibility here to turn this frog in front of us completely invisible, and this can affect multiple mobs, so for instance we're not invisible right now, but now both the frog and us are invisible. And if you look carefully you can see the little particles around here where the invisible frog probably is. And this does work on literally every potion if you want to get those to now be splash. These can also be thrown out of dispensers if you want, or even into portals if you like. Now unlike all the other modifiers, Dragon's Breath cannot be used unless the potion is already affected by the gunpowder modifier, and that's because it basically turns to a greater degree the way that you can throw these potions and make them work. So for instance being a splash potion right here, these are going to convert from something that we throw and then it's instantly affected to anything around it but disappears, to something that we also throw, but there is then an effect cloud that stays there for a while, very similarly to Dragon's Breath and if you walk through it or anything does, it will be given that effect. So this can be super useful as well for sort of forcing things to be in different areas, but be aware of course as let's say a splash potion of harming, if all of us are in the zone of that, we can continually get hurt there and actually die really quickly. If you want to know how to get Dragon's Breath, all you have to do is during the end dragon fight, just right click on the breath that it spews at you with a bottle, and that will give you tons and tons of Dragon's Breath. And it's definitely a good idea to collect a lot of this as it's quite useful for brewing, it's even just an awesome looking item. And there's one more way that we can modify the method by which these potions are used. However, this method is actually different whether you're in Bedrock Edition or Java Edition. We'll start by showing the Java Edition method and go on to Bedrock. And that is Tipped Arrows. So to make the tipped arrow item inside of Java Edition, what you want to do is you want to put all of your potions in a brewing stand. And by the way, a great way of making an incredibly easy automatic brewing area is to simply put a hopper in the top of the brewing stand and load up all of your ingredients in order. They'll sit in here and once this ingredient's done brewing, the one on top will go in. We want to start by making these splash potions. And once it's splash, you'll notice that automatically goes in, and this will turn these from splash to then being lingering potions, which is of course the type of potion made by the dragon's breath after it's mixed into a splash potion. And the splash potions in Java Edition can be crafted into tipped arrows. So put the splash potion in the crafting grid with eight arrows, and one potion turns into eight arrows of that type. So we went from potion invisibility to arrow of invisibility. This is really like a different potion type, and it works super well if you have a bow, especially certain types of arrows can be incredibly annoying. Like let's say an arrow of invisibility, we could shoot ourselves with that just like this. You just have to be aware it still does give you damage, and now we are completely invisible except for the arrow that's inside of us of course. But we came back from the effect there. And so these arrows are great for combat as let's say with this potion of turtle master, if we get fired by that, let's say we're firing another player, we are now super slow although we do have resistance, so that can be useful for slowing down your enemies. Same with let's say weakness, you could stop them from being able to destroy end crystals with that. Some of the best ones I would say are poison arrows as well as instant harming arrows. These are incredibly powerful.
powerful items. Whereas let's say some like an arrow of water breathing or an arrow of leaping are just not going to be helpful in that many different scenarios. Here we are inside of a bedrock edition mangrove swamp. This is how you make the tipped arrows on that edition. You want to use cauldrons. Now you don't actually want to use the splash potions or the lingering potions for this. You can fill up a cauldron with three different levels. One, two, three, just like that. So we'll fill these full of all these different effects. Well, you don't have to. We can just put it in once. And then what you want to do is right click on here with your arrows. That'll actually convert 16 of the arrows to that potion type while consuming one level. So right now we're bathing inside of the fire resistance here. Even strangely inside of the harming potion here. And we can right click and convert all those in there, but also using up all the potions. So it depends on how much is in there of how many you can convert, of course. But that is how you make tipped arrows in bedrock, which is certainly much easier, as cauldrons are just crafted out of nine iron, and so you don't have to bother with making splash potions, and you can get tipped arrows before you've ever even beat the ender dragon. So it's nice to have this feature in bedrock, and I 100% hope we'll get it in Java too, because not only do these cauldron potions look amazing, but also they're incredibly functional and are great for all kinds of different builds. So the literal only use for the cauldron inside of Minecraft Java is this. Of course, you can right click on water infinitely with your glass bottles to fill it, it'll never run out. However, with cauldrons, what you can do is you can right click on them with water, fill them up with water only, then you can right click on the cauldron there with your glass bottles, and lowering it down one level, you can convert these from glass bottles into water bottles, but it's completely useless to do that, although you can also empty the glass bottles into this. And so basically that's literally the only brewing related use of the cauldron inside of all of Minecraft Java. There's obviously an insanely large amount of different potions inside of Minecraft. Well, night vision is definitely great for caving, invisibility good for tricking mobs or players, jump boost is okay, but honestly not that useful compared to a beacon. We have fire resistance, which is definitely a must have when you're traveling in the nether. Speed is mostly for novelty but can be useful. Slowness is basically useless inside of survival single player but can be good for PvP. And the potion of the turtle master is similar. Water breathing is also one of those super useful potions because of course if you have water breathing you can then swim infinitely underwater while the timer is running of course so not really infinitely. And while you're down there your bubbles will stay full. There's also instant health which will give you well instant health same with instant damage and something like instant damage is obviously never a good drinkable potion why would you want to drink a potion of instant damage but what can be really useful is putting this on tipped arrows or on splash potions and there's a poison potion which is very similar good to give to other mobs not very useful to drink regeneration is good as if you get hurt you regain your hearts a lot quicker so you'll notice right here when we get hurt we're going to regenerate our health very very quickly because we have that regeneration potion so it's sort of health regenerating separately from just your standard saturation replenishing then there is strength which is good if you're trying to fight a lot of mobs, weakness, which is mostly only useful for curing villagers. There's also the luck potion, but it's an unobtainable item. And slow falling is a super fun potion, making you well slowly fall. And of course that can be really useful with elytra, but also just if you have a massively tall base, you can go to the top of it, jump off and slowly glide down across your world without even needing elytra, it's sort of like parachuting. And of course all the other potions in the game are just variants of this. I hope you enjoyed that video featuring everything about potions and brewing and mining. Minecraft. If you did, make sure to throw a splash potion at the like button, subscribe to see more content like this, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!